a changing media situation. If a rap group is using James Brown, they're kind of in the same market, you know. They're, but uh, Negative Land doing U2, they're not in the same market sonically. But if you look at it in terms of larger practices of quotation, then it goes all the way back. You know? Now you can do a, a twangy guitar, and, and all of a sudden you have Dwayne Eddy, uh, Ennio Morricone, uh, Clint Eastwood, you know, Good, Bad, and Ugly, uh, and, uh, and John Zorn. And, much more dense, um, uh, dense material that, uh, that people are working with now. Pervasiveness and redundance, repetition of the mass of the mass media. Uh, we're trying to think in a straight line. You're driving a crooked line. I'm sure they get car sick. Information pours. Information instantaneously and continuously. The medium is the massage. The medium is the massage. Any understanding of social and cultural change is impossible without a knowledge of the way media work as environment. Um, the trip about uh, a lot of uh, uh, cut up, um, cut up film and, and, and audio cut up is um, uh, that it comes out of, as much out of folk art and, and bricolage and vaudeville. It comes out of circus. It comes out of all those things. When people are talking about Hartfield, they, they often say that he comes out of a modern art context, like that he comes out of Cubism. But in fact, uh, uh, there were people doing uh, like cut-up postcards, you know, like the the wagon with an ear of corn, the, the you know, 20 feet long, that that type of thing. They were doing a popular photo montage in in the 19th century, long before Hartfield, long before Picasso ever did his sort of collage uh, piece. So it's important to see all these things. It, uh, all this cut-up stuff, all this montage stuff, and as much in the popular arts as with that fine arts. Well, look at, uh, you, you know, when video, uh, when Porter Pax first came out, there was this whole utopian uh, discourse about how it was going to bring democracy, and what, mostly, probably what it brought more than, uh, you know, paper tiger television was, uh, uh, you know, the funniest home videos, videos, you know, I mean, it, it, there's, uh, that, um, it's an institutional thing, you know, there was nothing uh, intrinsic to the technology with digital audio uh, band radio, there was going to be a proliferation of channels, those channels might get locked up just like cable television, but still there might be an opportunity to take over old AM stations as, as the more commercial uh, radio goes up to digital audio. Bodies take on more technology and and images of bodies become more technological, you know, the, the, whole, the whole trip is about not... Pretty soon you won't need actors. You, you can just take some old actors and, and run them through a computer and have them uh, uh, doing what you want. You know, it's gonna, that's going to actually raise the whole copyright thing to another level. There, there's some people who think that the world is going to break down to uh, people who who do have access to these uh, all this information systems or people live in information systems. Oh, shut the cop! It will enable them to, to operate in the world somehow, whereas the rest of the people that don't have it, we're, you know, we're fall, by the wayside. Yeah, yeah, fall by the wayside. Yeah. You, you can look at it that way. This whole utopian thing for the internet, all of that utopianism can be seen as sort of a, you know, a shoehorn into a much more oppressive situation. <laughs> If you look at, well, you know, Wired magazine, and they, there's still, like, this cult of McLuhan. Uh, Professor McLuhan is... Ours is a brand new world of all-at-onceness. Time has ceased. Space has vanished. We now live in a global village. <laughs> Without an understanding of media grammar, we cannot hope to achieve a contemporary awareness of the world in which we live. Hotel will continue. Wait a minute. She doesn't mean the Beatles on tape. She's talking about the tape Beatles. We're going to start. Good morning. The tape Beatles are a group of... Good morning. Five individuals uh, who originally got together in 1986 to pursue what we thought at the time was a new avenue of production that would make use of audio tape as a... Uh, expressive medium. You. Sitting over here to my left is Paul Neff, and uh, I'm Lloyd Dunn, one of the founding members. And sitting over here to my right is Linda Morgan Brown, who is in charge of most of the video production that the K Beatles do. When will you be finished? Well, I'll do what I can, Mr. Dawson, but no promises. He's had impossible those numbers. No excuses, no delays. Impossible. Well, remember that I can't say
stay late tonight. No excuses. Let no delay. Personalized letter. Lonely. I'll write a new paragraph for our standard one. Then I'll I could use some help. A whole new letter. American popular culture is basically, I think, what we're we're satirizing. The fact that everything that we see today and that we do today has been marketed to us and over marketed to us. I can't help you at all. Sorry. I can't do it. We live in a capitalist society in that ideas are uh, commodities to be consumed in much the same way that one would consume clothes and string beans, for example. It is sort of an empowering act, as far as I'm concerned, to take this stuff that sort of comes, you know, out of the pipes like running water, you know, hot and cold running culture, and using it as an ingredient in a recipe that we've come up with on our own. Looking at the kind of vacuousness of the culture and taking what we consider to be meaningful telling bits, putting them in a new context, makes them strange. It estranges the listener from those bits that they're very familiar with, puts it under a microscope so that it can be examined in a kind of weird mixture of objectivity and subjectivity. What we're really doing is creating context for these works that exist in the world. And it's the context that we create is where we are originally. I sort of fancy us as being kind of like a virus, you know, where we have, we have these ideas that don't have a broad appeal, but yet we, ha we have managed to get them out there, inoculate culture with little bits of it. Because we know very well that we're not some kind of leaders of a great art movement. We're not leaders of an avant-garde. We don't think there is an avant-garde. The total influence, material progress, economic, riches, political, and military. The way in which we say we plagiarize, and recall that we use this word with tongue in cheek. We are not taking entire Beatles songs and repackaging them as our own. We are performing what you could call recombinant composition and uh, creating things that are definitely, you know, new works with, uh, you know, made out of previously finished products. Other people's stopping points in making artwork is our starting point. So it's not the point of our kind of plagiarism to hide where the sources came from. We hold a registered trademark on the word plagiarism. Plagiarism is an industrial process. It's a technique that we have the rights to. Negative one should not have been sued for this. So here is the spectacle number one.